Hello guys, welcome to EZTV Presents Tech View, another episode. Uh, today I'll discuss about uh, how you can configure a three-node Isilon cluster. Actually, uh, for the Isilon, um, H500 model or like, um, and also 1FS 1 uh, 8. Point, uh, something like 8.x version is required. Like if you want to create a cluster, it's minimum requirement is you have to have three nodes. So, uh, as a demonstration, um, today uh, I'll install um, 1FS 8.1.0.2 version. Uh, actually, I'll do it um, simulator because uh, the equipment actually, if you um, purchase the Isilon storage system with a uh, three node or five node or eight node or whatever, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. Uh, so it's not possible to show you that exactly with the physical uh, hardware. So that's why um, I, I'm going to create this tutorial for uh, how you can uh, complete, how you can do the complete installation and configuration with the simulator. So the good thing is uh, Dell has a simulator for Isilon. So you can do your practice, whatever you're gonna do in a real field, you can do the same thing, exactly same thing you can do um, on, on the lab. So in my lab, uh, I'm going to show you actually how you can do that. So the first thing is you need um, Isilon simulator, whatever version you want, you need that simulator. How you can download? So you have to have, a, you have to have a access on Dell website. Um, that's how you can do that. So through, uh, I'll show you like how you can log in there and you can install. All right, so uh, now we, first we need to download the um, Isilon, uh, what is called the Isilon simulator. So you have to have access on the Dell portal uh, as, a Dell, as a Dell client, otherwise you cannot download it. So how you can get access, if you work for some company, and if they, the your company is the client of Dell, in that case, maybe you'll have access on the Dell portal. And from the Dell portal, you can download, you just need to log in and after that, you just need to type the one FS simulator or you can also, you can mention the version. So I didn't mention any version there, so I showed the latest one first. There's a lot of versions. So based on that, you can just click on download and install. So I have already downloaded. In that case, you don't need to do anything. Um, I'm going to directly share my screen. Um, all right, so this is my VMware environment, ESXi VMware environment. I have three hosts in a one cluster. So, um, I, and also I download the OVA, from, OVA format for the uh, simulator, uh, which I have on my desktop here somewhere. Um, all right, let's see um, on the desktop. Here, EMC Isilon 1FS 8.1.2.0 simulator. So this is the simulator I have here. This has OVA file. So we're gonna deploy the OVA file to the recent server. And I can install in any one of my hosts. So I need three node. So we're gonna install three node and I'll show you guys on each and every configuration. So this is my first episode um you can say it's part one uh install three node and configure the three node within one cluster and also do some other network configuration so as a requirement you 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 have to have ready the network side so as for the network side actually what do you need so new installation um i already select the node name it depends on you how you're going to name it based on your naming convention and cluster name, you have to provide a cluster name. So the first cluster I select like ELS Isilon PR, that is primary site. So I have a plan to create another site as a DR site. So which is um, disaster recovery site. So disaster recovery site, we're gonna do the same kind of uh, Isilon node setup, cluster setup, and we'll do the application from primary site to DR site. So uh, today's uh, tutorial is for part one and then uh, maybe part two will come up with some other configuration, file sharing, NFS configuration, maybe FTP server configuration, SMB configuration, 
some other things. And maybe the third part will be replication. And fourth part will be maybe um, uh, how you can decommission uh, or not. And fifth part, maybe how you can upgrade uh, from 8, uh, Isilon 8.1.0 to 2.0 um, uh, version two, uh, latest version, right? So that's what we're gonna do. How you can upgrade because if your company is running with uh, the lower, uh, like the oldest version, maybe your company is required to upgrade the latest version. So in that case, how you can do that? So there, there will be like maybe four or five uh, episode or four or five uh, part. So as a first part, you need some network. That means you need some IP subnet. So interface A, interface B is an internal network and it's called InfiniBand switch, InfiniBand. So Isilon has their own network system, internal, internal data communication, which is managed by the InfiniBand Infini switch. And, in, and inside the InfiniBand, there is a network and that network will be controlled by a private subnet, private, completely private, not public private subnet. So as a private subnet, how you can configure? So make sure you have all those subnets. Um, it makes minimum three subnet you need. So interface A, interface B, and another one is interface failover. So in here, as, as, as my plan, I have 192.168.40. So it's 40.0 subnet for my interface A, 45. Zero is my second interface, which is interface B for the InfiniBand switch. And I have another one, which is 50.0 subnet. And this is the first IP range. So based on that, I provided here the IP range, how many IPs I'm gonna use for interface A, interface B, and interface uh, failover. And also you have to have a DNS. DNS, my DNS is, uh, DNS for, is the same for uh, all, um, all the nodes and external. So, and also you need an external subnet. My external subnet is 55.0 subnet. So external actually, you can circulate the external subnet or external IP address for client use. So the first external subnet, you can use two subnet or you can use same subnet and you can make it, maybe you can use some block of IPs. Like for example, 55.2, 55.10, this uh, nine or 10 IPs, I can dedicate it, or if it can be 20 IPs or it can be 30 IPs, it, it depends on you, it depends on your design. So I can dedicate it, this nine or 10 IP address for management configuration, management communication. And also after that, maybe I can do a like tenant base, like for the client. So if you think your organization has a, a different, different department based on that, you can, uh, consider that department as a tenant and you can make a name on it like, and then you can create a subnet for that and you can create a uh, pool. So the first pool is default pool, which is pool uh, zero. So pool zero and under the pool zero, subnet zero. So subnet zero is a default and under that pool zero is for your management. And then if you want more group to add, then you can say pool 01, pool 02, and also with the name, file, video, audio, or management, or marketing, or sales, whatever you want. So different, different pool for different, different group. And you have to provide the IP address also. You can use the same subnet IP address and block, block some like 10 IPs for this group, 10 IPs for other group, like that, you can do that. So in my home lab, I have a switch uh, that's um, I want to show you here. In my switch, I already configured different different subnet. Uh, I'm going to the settings and configurations. So I am using a Unify network. So Unify, I have Unify uh, USG router, and USG router has the unlimited capability to create a VLAN. So based on the VLAN, I separated the subnet. So if you look at here, you can see here a lot of subnet here because I need uh, all those, so that's why. Let's st start it because I have my, all the networks ready. This is my networks. Before you start, you have to have everything ready. So my network is ready and I have the, um, 
OBA format um, uh, simulator file. So now I can deploy the machine to my B center. So I'm going to my B center and right click on the cluster and you can say deploy OVF template or you can go individual host and right click and you can say deploy OVF template, the same thing. So if you select the cluster in that case, after that you have to select the host. Now I'm going to add a deploy the OVF template. So the file can be OVF or OVA, but this simulator file is OVA, just double click on it and click on next. And then it will give you a default machine name. So what we are gonna do here actually, uh, you can say uh, Islam 8.2.0. After that, maybe you can mention you would say node. It's not mandatory, you have to have like the same way. Zero one, right? I'm just keeping my node here. Previously, I have actually wrong name. Um, I'm going to change it. So this is actually my file name, node one. All right, so. And this one will be node two, and this one will be node three. All right. So now I'm going to deploy the node. Uh, okay. So I, I have the name, click next. And then from the cluster, you have to select which host you want to deploy this machine. Any one of your host depends on how much resource you have on the host. So I'm selecting my second host. I have enough resource on that host. Click next. <clears throat> and it, it will take a little bit of time. Just you have to be patient on and um, you have to just wait a little bit. It's validating. All right. The validation is done. Click next. And then it's thin provision by default is selected. And also I'm going to select my basin data store. It depends on you which what kind of data store you have and based on the data store uh, free space, you can select your data store. It can be iSCSI, FCSEN or, or BSEN. So I have a BSEN available. So I'm going to select my BSEN storage and I click next. And then ne <clears throat> network. So the network by default through the OVA, it has total three adapter, but I need total five adapter. Why I need five adapter, I will describe. So right now leave it as it is, whatever, I'm not going to change from here. I'm gonna change it later after I deploy this machine, I will change it. So click next and I'm gonna click finish. So, so far I did nothing. I just provide the machine name, select the storage and click next, next and finish. So now the machine is deploying. If I see the status here, it's deploying. So in the meantime, what we can do, we can deploy the other two machine, other two node, because we need total three node, right? So I don't want to uh, like um, waste my time. Uh, I'm going to deploy the other machine. So click new, uh, so uh, deploy OVF template the same way. Select the location where you downloaded the file, OVF file, and so show the location. And after that, click next the same way and put the machine name. So I have the machine name ready already. I uh, just need to copy um, and go back to here and just paste it here. Not two. Click next and select the host. Which host he wants to? You can say host number three or here two. It, it, it depends on you, whatever you want. All right. So, or, or maybe I can do on three just as a demonstration. It doesn't matter. Whatever host you have a space. A specific resource like CPU, memory, and all other stuff. If you have, then you can just select that host and click next and select this one and click next. And this one, I'm gonna leave it as it is later on. After the machine is deployed, I will change it because I need two more, I will add two more uh, network adapter. But here, net and host only. Net, net is for net. Net network is for internal. Host only network is for external, which is for external communication. You can use it for management, and also you can use it for uh, client use. So I'll show you guys actually which one is going to use it. So primarily, this one we're going to use for external management, and we're going to add another 
another uh, network adapter, the kind of same kind of host only, and we're gonna add the, uh, the same um, VLAN we can add, and we can maybe dedicate some IPs for client use, which I will show you guys later. Click next and finish. So, so far we deployed two nodes. We need one more node, right? So I'm going to deploy another one, click deploy template, select the location, choose file, this one OBA and click next and provide the machine name, same way, number three, three number node, click next and select the host. Maybe I'm going to select second one and click next. And validating is taking a little bit time. It's gonna be done. Okay, right, it's done. It's pre-configured. So you don't need to be worried about it. It's already configured by Dell. And whatever you need, we're gonna, we're gonna modify it later. So just leave it as it is and click finish. All right, now you can see the status actually is deploying. It's deploying, so see the status actually. One is still deploying, it's 96% done. One, two, and three. So we deployed three also, right? Why is not showing three? All right, so we need to figure out which one, okay. Now, which, this one is not done yet, we have to wait. Uh, node one is almost done. Almost done, it's 98% done. All right, very close. I'm deploying three node at a time. All right, so node one is done. So now we need to do some change. What does change? Right click on it and go to the edit options. This is the very easy steps the way we do all of other virtual machine. So the CPU by default is two CPU. So if you want to get better performance, you can have more CPU on it. So I'm going to change it to four and um, uh, core per socket. Now it's socket shows four, but physically my physical host doesn't have four socket. It has two socket. That's why I need to change this formula. So I'm going to say two core per socket. So two core each socket, we have two socket that means it makes four and we need better performance. So memory wise, I'm going to add more memory. So you can say four, or you can say for better performance, so you can say four is fine because our del um, default one is two. So we just make it double, that's it. And with what we said, like we said two, we need two more, we need two more network adapter. And I'm going to add two more network adapter. So if you do like this way, this is, it will be a very easy way you can set up. So the first one, which is net, we wanna use external network 40 based on our plan. See here, in, sorry, yeah, sorry, not external, internal, which is for infinite band, interface A. So this is my VLAN name and that VLAN carries the IP address of 40 subnet. So I'm going to select this one, 40 network. That's how through the network adapter one, I'll get the 40 subnet IP addresses. It's internal for infinite band. And network adapter two, which one was before when we deployed in that time it was host only, right? So that one I said, we're gonna use external. So which external network we make, we, we plan, which is external VLAN 55. 
And if you're confused, you can check it from here. You say external is 55, right? And we, our plan is to reserve eight, nine or 10 IPs for that. So 55, I select a 55 as external. And then we need another internal, which is interface B for our infinite band switch, right? For the private submit. So we have another one is internal VLAN 45. So I have already created this VLAN after my network site is configured. So in your organization, if you don't know how to create a VLAN or how to create a subnet, you don't need to be worried because your network team will provide you the subnet, but you task as a system admin on the BMR side or on the physical side, but I'm showing the demonstration. That's why I created a distributed switch. Under the distributed switch, I created a um, distributed port group and I named and I assigned the 45 as a VLAN. But in your case, if you in implement the physical hardware, isolon hardware, you don't need to do that. Because everything you're gonna work right now, everything virtual, that's why I'm showing here. But physically, you don't need to do this VLAN selecting because you just need to have a physical adapter. Physical one nickel can have multiple port. So you just need a port for external network port and internal. Internal, you're gonna see on the rack, you say internal switch. External switch, maybe you don't need, you maybe you don't wanna see it. Your network team will give you a network drop. That means network cable. You just need to plug it. That's it. So I'm going to select this one. I'm using simulator, that's why it's virtual and that's why I'm, I created a VLAN on the business uh, uh, server. All right. And this network, again, so we, by default, it's gonna create a management network on uh, under subnet zero, it's gonna create a pool zero. So pool zero, we're gonna dedicate it 55 subnet, 10 IPs for management use. So if we want to provide a, my client, the reason we are building the uh, infrastructure, isolated infrastructure, because we want to provide service to our user. That means user can have their own folder or own file, they can save it there. It can be individual employees or individual client data, or it can be some application data. So you can make a, a group or tenant. So that tenant traffic or that group's traffic their files, storing, deleting, updating, whatever they don't want to do on that storage, which is going to be assembly share or NFS share, um, that share traffic will go through different pool, a different pool on under the same subnet. So that's why I'm using the same subnet, which is 55 again, because I'm confirming, I'm confirming the network first and whenever we're going to build the cluster after that we'll show you the, the configuration inside the one fs and the last one is for my failover for infinity band so my failover is 50 right failover fo Inter internal vlan fo50 this vlan i have i have dedicated for infinity band failover all right, so this my configuration and everything is done. And also one thing, don't forget, it's not only for this, any kind of virtual machine you deploy on your VMware environment, on the deployment phase, make sure you do these two things uh, under the VMR tool, under the VM options, and then go to the VMR tools and tools upgrade, check upgrade VMR tools before each power on. So which is gonna be automatically upgrade the VMR tools. And time is you need to have a synchronizing time. So with the host, select this one and click okay. So all of the configuration is done for our node number one. So now I'm going to do the same, uh, okay. In the meantime, what I can do, uh, I can power on this machine, this node, first node. So first node power on like booting up is to take time in the meantime, we can do the rest of the node configuration like uh, it's, it's, it's not power on. So we need to add more hardware. That's what we're gonna do right now, the way we did for the node one. So 
going to edit settings and CPU that was the same way for CPU. I think I don't need to describe anymore because I already described for the first node. We are doing the same stuff again for and then network, add more network, drive, network adapter one, network adapter another one because I at the beginning I told you guys we need total five network, right? So the first network will be internal for InfiniBand, which is 40 subnet. And I just need to select this, this one network. So virtually I'm just selecting and physically you wanna plug, that's it. You're gonna plug, that's it. And second adapter, which is host only, and that one will be my external, which is 50, uh, sorry, 55, 55 external network. So I'm selecting as a virtual, port group, but physically when you do for your office, you're gonna directly plug the network cable or external network cable from the external external port and infinity infinity band one, you're gonna put in the infinity band switch. That's it. Okay. And network adapter three is gonna be my second interface internal, which is 45, internal 45. And this one is for my client use, the same external, which is 55. And then for a failover, internal infinite band failover, which is this one. Okay. So, and BM options, do not forget it. Don't forget, never forget it. Okay. It's not only for the isolon, any kind of virtual machine deployment, make sure you do that. Otherwise, every time, whenever you upgrade the ESXi version or ESXi patch and all of the machine, whatever machine is reside on the ESXi host, it will be trigger uh, 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 tools upgrade and you have to do it manually. So in that, if you enable this, you don't need to do it manually. Just remember. So host two, I already configured. And the configure means like, no, it's not a configuration actually. I just added a hardware, network adapter plus connect with, plug the cable and uh, 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 yeah. And also add some CPU, so which is physical CPU. So whatever I'm doing virtually, you, you have to do it as a physical. So physically you don't need to actually do the CPU stuff because the north come up with a highly configured CPU and memory. But this is a virtual demonstration, that's why I'm just changing this. But the network stuff you have to plug in. I'm, I'm just showing you the virtual network distributed code group, but on your case, you're gonna plug it. That's it. I'm telling you again and again because just for remember. Now I need to add network adapter. I need to add network adapter, and then here I'm going to change it. So change it to distributed port group, which one? The first one is for 40 network internal infinity band. And the second one is, second one is for in, um, in external network, which is 55 billion. And third one is again for interface B, which is again infinity band, 45 subnet. This is the 45, okay. And then fourth one is for my client, I would like network traffic. So I'm dedicated this port group. Um, so how many? VLAN 65, uh, which one? Uh, last one. We are working on the last one, right? Which is failover, right? Oh no, sorry, I made a mistake. This one is 55, external, external filter for the client. Okay. And last one is for my failover. Internal improvement switch failover. And don't forget again, tools, check on this, check on this. All right. So, 
Hardware configuration wise, my other two nodes is ready, but I'm not going to power on right now because the first node, I need to configure a lot of things, network stops, um, also the cluster setup, everything I have to do that. After this one is done, then I will power on the rest two node or three node or four node, five node, whatever node you're gonna add with the same cluster. So now, now I cannot power on this. I can power on, but the configuration I'll do later. Okay, I can power on, no problem. The configuration I'll do later. I'm just going to power on, nothing else. Power on the machine. All right, so my target is to conf complete configuration of node number one because Isolon is Isolon requirement. The first node you have to configure all the network stops plus um, the cluster and you have to provide a cluster name. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm, I just open on, a, uh, on my browser, but in your case, you have to, um, you have to hook up a serial cable behind the uh, server of a fast node and you have to have a, another monitor. So from there you can just configure and you have to be on data center. And so this is the first node we are configuring. It's already put it. And it asks us to format the drive disk. I say yes. And hit enter. So it will take time. And let's see actually what the status of the other server is. I'm just making make, make, making it ready because it's gonna take time. So we don't wanna waste the time. That's why it's booting right now. Okay, I'm going to organize it. So node number one, node number two, node number three. So node number, node, node number two is also ready. So the disk format we can do right now, no problem, but we are not doing any kind of internal configuration on node two and node three. I'm just doing the formatting the disk, boot it up and format the disk. That's it, after that I will leave it there. Okay, so say yes. Say yes, hit enter. Uh, because the formatting disk is take time. That's why I'm just doing this right now, yes. Okay, so it, it, it's gonna work by itself. I'm just leaving that there. I don't wanna touch anymore this two node um, before I configure this one. So after I configure this one, everything is done. Then I'll add this two node with the cluster. So for now, forget about this two node. Node number two and node number three. You just need to concern with node number one and it's formatting. It takes time. Uh, it, it's gonna take about like five to 10 minutes and you have to wait. Uh, so in between, I want to say something. So if you if you are new in my channel, uh, please subscribe my channel and also don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like it. And also click the bell icon. That's how you'll get my all episode uh, uh, alert. Like whenever I upload any videos, you'll get alert. And thank you for watching and be patient because I'm showing you a lot of configuration. And if you have ICL knowledge, storage knowledge, there is a lot of jobs. Um, and it's, it's actually advanced level, it's like high level. So be patient and also invest your time. This is the right track to learn. Uh, stay with me. Uh, I'm just waiting for formatting the desk. It's gonna take time, I, should, I tell you. So we're just waiting. So the first node look like it's working, working now. I believe by default it has total a uh, sixty-four bay or something. Bay means the rack of hard drive. But we are not gonna uh, um, on the simulator. It doesn't have. It's maybe a touch two or three. No, three two. Uh, sorry, four or five uh, disks. Right. All right. So it's ready to configure. It's ready for configuration. So select an option. The first option is create a new cluster. And um, just give me a second. Let me do one thing uh, for better understanding. 
All right. So the first option is this one, right? Create a new cluster. And then second one is join an existing cluster. And third one is widget configuration manually reboot. So we are not going any one of this right now because this is the first post. We are not going, we are just gonna go with this, right? Create a new cluster because this is our first node. So let's do it. All right. So what do we need to do? We need to create a new cluster, right? So say number one, and it's gonna give you a agreement letter. So now it's showing 3%, you have to go to the 100%. So you have to read it. And if you have time, you can read it. Otherwise just like press the space bar multiple times and make it 100%. Very close. All right. So all the agreements I read it. Now it says, do you accept the YOLA? That means it's the agreement. There is no choice you say like no. If you say no, then you cannot install it. So your answer always should be yes. Now please enter a new password for root. So for managing root is a super user. So by default, the username is root. You have to provide the password for that. So it's, it's up to you what kind of password you're going to use. So I choose mine. Password. All right. Now it's looking for, say, please change the UI admin password for the default. So UI means user interface. So whenever you configure, completely configure the one FS cluster, after that, <clears throat> through the IP address, you can access through the management IP address because you remember external network, we, we like make a plan to dedicate uh, nine or 10 IPs. So uh, any one of the IPs, if you type on your browser, you'll get the interface. And from there, you can do the rest of the configuration. So that's called the UI user interface, one FS user interface. And by default, it created a username admin, but now they're looking for admin password. It depends on you, what password you're gonna provide as an admin password. So my, in my case, I'm going to provide my password. Again, you have to put it for verify. All right, now <clears throat> enter a new name for the cluster, configure name. So now you have to provide a cluster name. And again, it depends on you, depends on your organization. Before you do this kind of implementation, make sure you have to come up with a, some name, naming convention. So um, for demonstration, my home lab, I have a domain name ELS.com and everything I'm doing with the ELS, my company name is just my assumption. My company name is ELS. So um, I'm going to do ELS. I still on. This is my primary set. So I have a plan to do a DR set also. That means uh, disaster recovery set. So for the recover, uh, recover, um, disaster recovery set, I'll provide the different name different cluster because that one is different cluster. So this is um, ELS isolon primary set. So I'm, I say PR, let's see. All right, now cluster encoding. So for encoding method, there is a 22 encoding method, but you have to choose number eight, which is UTF-H, UTF-H. Why? Because they already provide you the instruction UTF-8. So you have to put number eight, hit enter. And now it says configure interface A, configure net, net mask. So number one. Configure net mask. Oh. All right. 
So net mask, configure an internet net mask means subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Because my all of the uh, IP subnet is 24 subnet. Hit enter. Now, so configure net mask. The number, uh, the number two is configure MTU, which is already configured by default. Now I need to configure number three, which is configure in interface AIP ranges. So hit number three, uh, type number three and hit enter. And then it says add an IP, IP range or delete an IP range. So we need to add it. So hit, uh, like press number one, hit enter and low IP address range. So based on our plan, if you forget it, you can check it based on our plan. Interface A is 192.168.40.2, and then the highest one is up to 10, right? So I'm going to minimize it, which is 192.168.40.2. Hit enter, and then <clears throat> high IP address. Just remove that two and say hit enter. So your IP address configuration is changed, done. Hit one more, enter. And configure interface A, it's showing you again. You already did and hit one more enter. Now it says select an internal interface to configure internet uh, interface A, primary interface, which we already done. And then number two is interface B. If you guys don't understand, I, I'll show you again here. Uh, let me do one thing. Take a pen. Um, all right. So don't worry about this because this one is already configured as the interface A, right? This one is already done. This one is already done. Now select the internal interface to configure this one, right? So this one is already done. So we are not worry about this. We are not worry about this. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna do this one, the second, number two, this interface. Which one are you gonna do? Gonna do this one. We're gonna do this one. Fail uh, in, uh, interface B with secondary plus plus failover, both together. We're gonna do this one. Now this this is our task. We're gonna do this one. All right. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna type number two and hit enter. And now again, it's show you inter for interface B number one to configure. Say so hit number one, net mask 255.255. Oh, sorry, 255.255.0. So this is my interface B, which is my sub 45, right? Hit enter. I just provide the net mask. Then I have to provide the IP range, right? So number two now, number two is IP range and number one is add a new IP range. And then what's the IP range for my interface B, which is 192.168.45, not 40. This is my second one, right? If you forget, you can check it based on the plan is 45 and it's gonna start from two and it may end 10 for the infinity band, right? That's what I'm doing right now. So dot two, hit enter. And then the highest IP range is 10, hit enter. So you provide the highest and lowest both configure interface B IP range, which is already done. You just hit one more enter here. And then now it's asking you, um configure interfa uh, interface b failover hit one more enter and then configure internal interface number 2 Number two is already done, right? Hit one more enter. Hit one more enter. 
Now configure external sound, okay. External interface. So now, so I did one mistake, which is I didn't uh, provide the failover IP range. So we can do it later. It's not a problem. If you forget it later on, you can provide. But now configure external subnet. So as external subnet, number one, external interface, right? Hit one. And then net mask number one. So configure external one net mask, which is again 255.255.255.0. Hit enter. Now configure external one IP ranges, number three, number three, right? IP ranges. So configure external IP ranges, which is on my, based on my plan. What's my plan? External, this one, right? 55.2. So IP range. So number one, because it's an add, add, range number one and then low IP which is 192.168.55.2 hit enter and then the highest one is 10 hit enter so IP range for external is done and again interface external one is done again one more now configure the default gear so default gateway for this What's the default gap now? So it should be 192, 168.55.1. 55.1 is default gateway. So 192.168.55.1. Dot one sixty eight dot fifty five dot one. Hit enter. Now, smart connect zone name, smart connect service IP. So, smart connect for the whole cluster. Smart connect is the main thing. So, you have to assign an IP address for the smart connect. Um, let me show you the my plan. So smart connect IP actually I reserve 192.168.55.150 from my external subnet because internal subnet you cannot give you cannot like access the isolon cluster for management or your user, you cannot access through the internal. You have to go with the external. So I'm dedicating one IP address for external, which is for the smart connect. All right, so smart connect zone name, zone name we can provide it later. I'll show you how you can provide it later. Smart connect server IP. So we're gonna do it number two now. Smart Connect uh, Service IP, which is 192.168.55. What? Dot one fifty, right? Yeah. Hit enter. So IP is done. Like Smart Connect Conference is asking again, so it's done. Now configure DNS DNS server and search domain. So DNS server for one. DNS server. So configure the DNS. 
So my DN server is 192.168.1.2. And I have another one. So I'm going to put a comma and then 192.168.1.3. So, and in, for your organization, if you have different DNS, like it is primary DNS and alternate DNS, that's what you're going to put it in. And if you don't configure it on, in, in this screen, you can do it later on. It's not an issue. Hit enter. And now search domain number two. Again, search domain also you can configure here or you can configure later on. So I'm going to do it here, hit enter. Search domain is my domain name is tls.com. My domain name. In, in, in your case, it's going to be in your organization domain name. All right. So configure DNS settings is done. Configure external subnet is done. Now configure time zone and configure date and time. That one also you can do later on. Hit enter. Now configure cluster join. You can say manual mode, which is number one. And now it shows you the whole configuration, whatever you did. And asking you the commit change. That means you want to make it permanent or not. So in that, in our case, we, what we can say, yes, we can do that. So what are you gonna do? Say, yes. So we have to wait a little bit. All right, so it's done. But in here, actually I missed one part, which is, um, which is failover. Let's see what happened. Otherwise, you're gonna edit. All right. So we can log in, right? So our password root is user, and password is our password. All right. So we can run some command here. Uh, say, for example. Uh, I send network interface list. You can see this one. It's not gonna, you cannot do the paste here over there. So net, ISI network interfaces list or I SI STA to status. So the 55.2, the notice shows okay. And then you can say ISI, ISI, um, network interfaces, tell us. All right, it's actually, oh, sorry. Network interfaces list, not status. List, the whole list. Oh, sorry. Again, one more mistake. List, you have, you have to make some space. You can hit enter. All right. So what kind of interface is up? What kind of interface is down? Everything shows. Uh... All right. So nothing else you need to do here. Now we are going to go in back to was node number two. So node number two, we are going to join with the cluster. So that one, you don't need to go with the number one, create a new cluster because we already created. We just need to put number two and hit enter. And it shows the existing cluster. 
which is number one. Uh, let me show you. Uh, say number four. Okay. So this is here. It shows this, right? Enter the ref refresh that list. And now, so we need to do this one, right? Hit number one. Now it's joining. So now, it's, now the node number two is going to join with the existing cluster. The host number three will do the same thing. Number two joining, join an existing cluster. And we show the exit cluster name, which is number one, and hit enter. Okay, number two again, number one again. All right, it's working. Now it's working. So it, it will take time. In the meantime, let's see actually. 192.168.55, sorry, dot 55.2. Dot yes, one of us node is available. So you can log with admin or root, whatever you want. Root has uh, like all kind of access, or admin also has the all kind of access. And welcome. One two three dollar. So we can monitor from here if you go here. Uh, hardware configuration. You can see here. Node number one is here. Node number two, almost done, right? No, number three is not, one of his version is not available here because it's working right now. And drive, so this is the GUI mode, which is UI interface. And how many bays on number one, it shows storage healthy and this, so it still is working. Okay, each node has a 60 way, but all of the base doesn't have any hard drive. Only how many base has the hard drive, which is seven, seven. So it starts from one, so seven, which is not bad, uh, it's working fine, believe. All right, so three of them is showing. See the status, this one is still working, but yeah, so number two is done. You can, if you want, you can log in number two, root, and with your password. Um, ISI. Create your status. All right. So now we can uh, check with because this interface you cannot copy and paste. That's why I'm going to open my party. Any one of the node, if you can log in. So, for example, the first node, 55.2, yes, root, enter. All right, ISI, status. So from any one of the node, you can check the status. All right, it shows the status here. See, this three node is okay. So this three node is already connected. So for internal network, 
the second one on the BM level, which we added for the external. And we dedicated IPs from two to 10. So whenever you add more node, it's gonna take, say for example, we had two more nodes, right? So that's why the second node is connecting with IP address three and four, uh, the third one is having with the IP address four. All right. So now what we have to do? All right, everything shows fine. Cluster overview. Now everything connected. We all are green. The first thing is you have to do the licensing. Um, so uh, Dell Isilon provide you based on your request, based on if you are their client, they'll give you 30 days Give, they will give you 30 days trial license. If you go to the license option, right now it shows an assign, nothing, three node, and status shows unlicensed. So you have to do a license. If you have a license, you can do this one, like activation file wizard, and you have to contact with the vendor. That means you have to contact with the Dell. They will help you how you can assign the license. But it, as a demo, we don't have license, so we are going to manage the trial. So if you click manage the trial, and it will give you the all the tools is included on the 1FS. So you can say, select all the modules and start trial, and it will take time. Uh, we don't wanna <clears throat> waste our time here. So I'm going to pause the video and I will come back whenever it's done. All right, so the trial version is already installed. It says evolution in progress. Now you can close it. See the status evolution version. So now we have the license. All right, so one thing we forget, what we forget. So I told you like on the First node configuration, we forget to assign failover IP addresses like minimum and lower, uh, lowest range and highest range. So, and, and that time I said, don't worry, you can do it later, right? So later is means here. If you go to the cluster management and network configuration, you'll be able to see here, and uh, internal network, because we miss internal network failover, right? So internal, Failover, this, this is the internal failover. And the first one is in internal um, interface B, and this is the failover. So interface B we assigned, that's why it shows here, nine IP addresses, but we have no range defined. Range, so add a range, provide the range. 192.168.50.2 and here up to 10 submit interface b failover are not enabled you must specify a valid net mask and ip range for then set enable so net mask is 255255 and say enable and submit. The cluster must be rebooted after this session we want to reboot the cluster, yes. So I'm going to reboot the cluster and that's why I'm disconnected from here because I made some change on the node. Uh, rebooting this node, see here, is rebooting. So we have to wait. All the nodes are rebooting. So we have to wait. By this time, I'm, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back whenever the node is available. All right, so all the nodes is powered on. Let's try it again. Two or, sorry. 168.55.2234. So two uh, four IPs we have available. 
So for management access, we can use any one of that. We reserve nine IPs, right? So that means two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So right now we have three node. You can use three IPs, two, three, four. You cannot use five. Okay. Root. Run. Root or admin, whatever you can join. Now, the other configuration. So, first I will configure some access zone. Create access zone. I'll configure network sub later. Why I'm going to create an access zone, I'll, I'll describe you later. So create a access zone. So access zone name. Say uh, different different zone for different different group, different different department. So for example, uh, management, marketing, sales, audio, video, file, whatever name you want to provide, treat them as a zone. That means they are a tenant. So to make a group or tenant, you have to define them as a access zone. So in my case, I can say um, marketing, MKT on marketing, M-E-R-K-E-T-I-N-G, marketing. Or you can say, um, something based on the application or some let's say uh, sales sales on the zone right zone name is sales and you can say sales and we didn't create any directory inside it so that's why I just say create here So we have only one group, group net. On the network configuration side, we have only one group net. So select the group net. Authentication port available, authentication provider. Local system, file system. Both create a zone. It shouldn't be take that long. It should be pretty quick. So sales, marketing, um what else you can, you can do it so you can just create a different different group all right so i made one mistake which is if you go to the edit option, the local system. Actually, I don't want it. Actually, I want to add the domain <clears throat> because every time we're going to work with the domain user. So for that, what we're going to do before we create any access. So the first task is whenever you log into one interface after your new installation or new configuration, the first login on one address, you have to confirm the license first. Then the second task, the second task would be adding with the authentication provider. That means you have to add your one address with the domain. This will be your that will be your second task. 
authentication. So authentication join with the domain and provide the domain name, which is els.com and then user. In my case, I, I have administrator or you can have your A account, administrative account. You can provide the administrative account and administrative account password. That's what you can do. Um, so I'm going to add administrator and the password of the administrator. All right. And it, nothing, nothing else. Just provide the domain name and authenticate the user to verify the domain and then say join. So it will take a little bit of time. All right, so ELS.com is online. That means it's successfully added. Now, the third task is you have to create an access zone. So access zone, yeah, that means based on the group, you consider the, that group as an access zone or as a tenant. So <clears throat> by mistake, actually, we already created cells. We can delete it or we can modify it. Edit. Actually, I want to put, put them back, everything back here. I want to take this one Active Directory here, just on the Active Directory and save. So it's updated and you can close it. So one group we have created, and we can create multiple access zone based on how many you have. Uh, so for example, IT, we have IT department or a developer group or the whole IT department you can consider as a tenant or a, as an access zone. So you can say IT. And in here you can say IT. And at this one here, create a zone. Oh, sorry. The reason it shows because you have to create here. IT, just IT, create zone based directory if it does not exist. So create, now it's gonna create. It's gonna create on the background, on the file level, it creates a zone. So again, you have to wait. So, yeah, another group is created, uh, sales, IT, maybe um, administration, marketing, you can create another job. So we're gonna show you three, with three. Marketing, so same thing, you wanna create here, slash this and create the directory. Make sure you check mark on it and add the domain, create the zone. All right, so our configuration side is okay. Now we have to, so first thing is you did the licensing, then edit the domain, how is creating the access zone. Fourth, we're gonna do the network configuration. I'm just using another uh, note for, because I want to do multitasking because the other one is taking time, right? It's taking time, so. Just for saving the time, nothing else. Oh, it's done. So, so zone is created, domain is already added, right? Uh, now we can do the fourth one is network configuration. Now, group net zero. One group net. You can create multiple group net, but you don't need to. Under one group net, you will have subnet. So you can create. You can create multiple subnet. So multiple subnet means it's external network subnet. Right now we have only 55.0.24 slash 24, 24 subnet. That means it's 
the IP, IP will be 192.168.55.1.55.2 or something like this. And there is a pool zero by default, which is using by management. So our management is management IP is accessing this 55.2, 55.10. Now the zone we created, the zone we created for our client use. For them, we have to dedicate some IP. So we have to create some IP pool under the same subnet. But if you want, you can have different subnet. In that case, you have to create a subnet first, then pool. So what do you have to do? You have to go here, more option, then add a subnet. And then under the subnet, you have to go to more and then you have to add a pool. But right now, we are not creating any subnet. We're gonna use the same subnet but different IP range. So what do we need to do? We have to create a some pool. So we are going to create a pool. So for creating a pool, we have to go to the subnet option, more option, and then add pool. And we're gonna provide the pool name. Oh, before we do that, one, one more thing. I'm going to cancel it. So for this subnet, go to the edit option, go to edit. See here what we have so far. Uh, smart Connect server name. So this is the Smart Connect. This is the main IP address. Whoever is accessing the either management or your client, whoever is accessing, everybody will know one IP or one name. Because in the background, there is a lot of private IPs and also the your public IPs, right? So you cannot disclose or you cannot like uh, announce all the IPs for your user, then they will be confused. In that case, we're gonna use one domain name or one IP address. But on the configuration side, we're gonna assign which IP range or subnet for this management for the user. That's what we're gonna distinguish in this configuration. So the first configuration is, uh, on the beginning, when we configure um, the first node, we assign smart connect IP address, but we didn't provide the smart connect ser service name. So the service name you can say, this is the isolation storage, right? So you can say uh, ELS isolation. That's it. Or the whatever cluster name you can have, do the same thing. PR ELS isolation PR dot ELS. Dot com. Nothing else, just save it. So our IP address is 150 and ELS isolon PR primary site ELS.com and close it. So now we're going to create a multiple pool, right? So the pool name. What it provide? Say SL. And before we do that, we're gonna check it actually what we have. Access zone. So we have cells. Cells. You can, I, don't know, I think that, sorry, SL, yes, cells. Right there is wrong. Let me, I don't know, I can change it. It doesn't matter. The spelling is mistake. You can change it later. Um, oh, it's fine. It's not an issue. All right, so. It's a typing mistake. So the description, you can say. Sales department and access zone. It's a sales access zone. You have to assign like this, sales. And the IP range for the sales. 
So we'll say 192.168.55. Dot what? 55 dot? Uh, because up to 10, we assign for management. So after 10, which is 11, from 11 to 10 dot 15, uh, sorry, 192.168.55 dot uh, dot 20. And which network, which external network? So first external network we are using for management. Second external network we are using for all kind of access zone X traffic. That means uh, client traffic, right? So from the host number one, node number one, external number, uh, external network two, then from host number two, external network two, from host no, uh, node number three, external net network number two. Because you remember here, if I go here in any one of the, yeah. so this is the external network number one, and this is the external network number two. So one is we are ded we dedicated, um, dedicatedly assigned for management, and the rest, the the, the second second external one, we're gonna use for dedicatedly for client use whatever access zone you have for everybody use this one that's what we are doing right now right and and also smart connect basic zone name so the zone name actually zone name means you can say uh let's say cells dot els Sales dot sales dot ELS dot com, right? So later on, we're gonna, oh, sorry, dot com. Whatever, whatever name we are using right now, we don't have any, uh, let's keep in record, not. So we're gonna create a, sorry. Sales dot, ELS.com. We're going to create a DNS entry for that. And also, we have uh, ELS Isolon PR.ELS.com. That's what also we're going to create. And then it's marketing. -E marketing.ELS.com. And then it's IT.ELS.com. Uh, all right. And for this one, we assign the IP. What is the IP address we provide? 10.15, uh, sorry, 192.168.55.11220, right? And so for this one, we're going to provide maybe for uh, 21 to 21 to maybe 30, right? And for this one, we're gonna assign 40, sorry, 40 and 31. And this is actually, I'm going to take it out from here. This one is main domain. And this IP address, we select this one for 192.168.55.150. So we're gonna create all the, for all this, we're gonna create a DNS entry later on. So for now, sales.els.com and everything looks good. Add pool. So it's creating the pool. So, okay, one pool we already created. Now, another pool. Under the pool, right? One more. Oh, no, sorry. Under the subnet, add pool.
cool. Pool zero. Oops. Pool one and pool this is number two. And so number two and which is marketing. Marketing, right? Based on our note. Yes, marketing at 21 to 30, right? So it's um, marketing to access zone is marketing, IP ranges 192.168.55.21 and 192.168.55.21. Thirty, right? And the same thing, the network adapter. So from the first node, interface number two. From the second node, second interface. Because we don't have any more. We don't have third, fourth, fifth. If you need, then you have to add more physical network. And from for the demonstration, you have to add more network adapter which we don't have it, right? Um, number three node, external node two. All right, and zone name, so we know the zone name. We have the zone name, right? Marketing, and provided here. That's it, nothing else. Apple. And then the third one, we're going to create for IT. Just pool two, description pool two, okay, underscore IT, description. Department access is IT and IP range is 192.168.55.31.192.168.55.32. Sorry. Uh, up to 40. It depends on you how many IPs you want to assign. 55.3830. And the same thing network going to uh, distribute through this one for node number two, external two, and node number three, external two. And the zone name is whatever we decide here. It's it.ls.com. Join name. And that's it. Oh, what I did, what the mistake. Oh, sorry. Actually, this is not 30, this is 40. Add the code. All right, it's done. So the sales one, actually I forget to add pool zero, uh, pool one. Let's see if I can add it, but it's not mandatory. Whatever it is, you can leave it like that. Pool one, underscore this. So it looks good if you can do that. All right, so close. Now you have pool one, pool two, Sorry, so zero, one, two, this one will be three, it will be three. This is another mistake here. I'm no, no worries, we can anytime edit it. So, three, right? See. All right, so we created total three pool and also we have total three. Access zone. 
Um, internal network is also good. Everything working fine. Uh, now we need to, uh, so this is the fourth task, right? And the fifth task is creating some shear, Windows SMB shear. So for SMB shear, all right, where are you gonna create SMB shear? Under the system, by default access zone system. But now we have dedicated access zone. So for example, for IT, I'm going to select the IT department and I'm creating a SMB share for that. Create SMB share and name it, whatever the name. So for example, IT department, they want to upload some video. They need a video folder. So you can create VIDU, BDO. And you can say dollar sign. And it will go under where? Video. So browse it. No. So you can say video. So there is no, if you browse it, you see there is no directory present. So in that case, what do you do? You can just directly type the folder name and create it. And on the way bottom, take out everyone access and add a person who has the access. So go here. So for example, I have a user in my active directory, which is sysadmin. Sysadmin, you can add group or you can add user and your domain, then your domain, search it, sysadmin, right, select. So sysadmin user, I'm providing him a full control on this folder, admin. So I add him and create it. All right. So I have created the video, but one thing, if you go to the file, uh, file system explorer, you have a video here, go to the edit and see in here is you have Edit options, see what it shows. User has root permissions, where browse, okay. All right. Close it, all right. So we created a video folder for IT department, which is our access zone. Now they need to access it, right? But how they can access it? I cannot provide them an IP address or something. So I have to provide them a DNS name. So they can go by their DNS name or So I'm going to my DNS entry. Say first, I'm going to create delegation, new, new delegation, new delegation, next, something. So ELS ISLAN PR next add
152, which is my smart connect. 158.55.150. Finish. So if I run the command, or pin, pin command, ls, that's not okay. See pin 1.168.1, so dot. 55 dot 150 is pinging, right? ELS Islam PR dot ELS dot com. Okay, let's see the configuration again on the network side. Pool zero range. Did you mention anything here? No. Oh, so this is our management, right? We have to do the name for the management. See, there's no zone name. So this is management. And the management dot ELS dot com. Management dot ELS dot com. Save it. So right click on it. Delegation, next. Management.els.com slash add the domain name and here IP is 192.168.1.150. Sorry, is 55.150. Okay, next, finish. But the first one, what happened with this? If you can check it, Okay, management. So what else we have? We have sales.com, right? Sales.com. So right click on it, delegation. New delegation, click next. Sales next, add. Sales.com, but the IP is your smart connect 192.168.55.150. All right, okay, next, finish. And so we're gonna do the all kind of network um, the DNS entry for all of our zone name. Marketing, we have to create a market marketing we did already. No, management we did. Management means like managing the ISRM. Marketing, so the delegation, new delegation, just remove this part. Nice, add the whole domain name, and then 192.168.55.150. One fifty, which is my smart connect. So a smart connect gonna be connect you 
with the cluster, but after that, it will look for the zone, which is you specify as a marketing. So marketing zone, whatever IP address range you provide, you're gonna resolve that IP address. Finish. Last one is IT, right? New delegation. Next, IT. Add it.els.com and 192.168.55.150. Okay, next and finish. So now we need. You can check it.com. Oh, sorry. Uh, ping it.ls.com. And you can check NS lookup. I oh, sorry, let's look up it.ls.com. So it.els.com, what is the range of the it.els.com? 190, uh, 18168 55 30 to 40. So user will get, user, may, may, user might connect to it. User gonna type it.els.com slash their folder, which is BDU or whatever folder they have access. But in the background, it will resolve the IP address. The user will be connected through the IP address. What kind of IP? the range from the IT department. So the range is 31 to 40, any one of the IP. Let's see what the IP is resolved now. See, it's now showing 32, right? This is on the 32. Again, run again. This is on 31. Run again. This is on now 33. Thirty-one, thirty-three, thirty-two. So based on the user, if whenever is busy, it will change. Thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, up to forty. And if it is marketing, then what will be happen? So just let's look up marketing. So marketing subnet is 21 to 30, right? It's, now it's result 23. If you confused, you can check from here, marketing 21 to 30, right? So it's result now 23 in between any one of the IP address, which is good, right? And then we can check another one, which is our sales, right? Sales. Thirteen, and we can say management. So management is IP number two to ten. So it's result now four. Was number four. It can go two, three, four because we have only three nodes. If we have more nodes. Nine nodes in that case is going to resolve maybe five, maybe sometimes six, maybe sometimes seven. All right, so DNS entry, the DNS delegation, configuration, everything is done. Now we need to check actually, can we access? Okay, how you can check it? So for example, IT department, we created a share, right? So what the share name is BDO, right? Let me check. Close it and go to the SMB share. Go to the IT. It's video. Please capital IDO dollar. Okay, it's for the IT department. How we can access? And who has access? Sysadmin has access. So if you double click on it like this, and then you can say it dot ELS dot com slash V capital video 
BID, your video. BID, your video. IT dot ELS dot com slash VIDO dollar, right? Hit enter. Now it will prompt for username and password. So it's already domain ELS pointing domain ELS. If it is not in that case, you have to type ELS or your username at ELS or ELS slash your username. But for my case, I don't need SYS is ADMIC admin because it's under ELS and password. Okay, maybe my password is wrong. So let's see, try with the other one. All right, I'm able to log in there. New folder. But it says I don't have permission. Why I don't have permission? Why? The reason is for the level actually, video team, they, the system admin, the one I provided him, he doesn't have access. So whoever has the root level permissions, they can provide the permission. So if I go say, management, management, right? management and uh, nothing else management.els.com uh, no it's, it's going to uh, other, other 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 direction so let's show you how you can give away so um smb share says system by default right yeah. IFS and who has access? You did. Who has access on this? Everyone has access, right? So where's the link? IFS, right? So where's IFS? If you go, just close this one. You say here. either management or die 192.168.55.150 slash IFS, do this one. Uh, root. All right. So as a root, I log in there, or I can do another thing. If it is myself, then I can add myself here. Say here, add as a root, select. I have a user here. No, not local system. No, it is a local system. So you can use, because right now on this one, you have everybody has access. You can remove this one and you can assign, say the root. Root permission to anybody. So anyway, I'm able to log in there as a root user on the folder level. So. Just keep in mind one thing, on the folder level, you have to log in as a root user because you are the administrator management. So go to the, your, uh, because you are providing access to your user. So which user? BDO user, right? The IT department user, right? So, and the username is sysadmin. So that sysadmin has, must have to have access on uh, IT department or individual, this one. So you can provide him access on the video, right click on it, go, go to the properties, go to security and see here, 
it doesn't have permissions. Uh, so add. Go to the edit option, see everyone that doesn't have permission, add more user. So from there, this location is showing, okay. Why it's not showing the domain? Because it's not domain redirected. All right, do one thing. On the IT department, access zone, right? On the IT department, IT, right? IFS IT. So in the IFS IT, you need assembly. Not actually here, this zone. On the system level, I want to add file level. For example, IFS, right? IFS, you edit. Close IT. Okay, go back, one step back. File system, IT, view edit, edit properties. So group, others, everybody, provide the full save. Okay, you cannot do that. So the only thing is you need to know how we can provide the directory permissions. You can create a directory from here also. And from here, Windows assembly, one FS. What's the problem? What's the problem with this domain? Let's see the access of All right, everything looks good. Um, the clip director is there. So assembly share. Edit, edit settings, IFS, okay, browse IT. Add a member. Mr. Nice, why? You should show you the full cancel. 
So when I when I go IT and go to the edit option, delete and go to down here, say add member, select, it shows ADLS, right? But it's not showing when I want to All right, so the one thing is actually, so by default, by default, the, the root path which is IFS, if you go to the edit option, edit, who has access on this path? Everyone, which is not secure, remove it, add who? Select a member from our system root, select full control, and then add new admin, select, give the root level access. Okay, so both of them, like root user and admin user has a full control the full permissions on this path. So save the change, right? Close it. Now let's see. because it's locating the local user. So if you go for the mark, uh, sorry, IT department for the IT, all right? Um, just ID, create a share, on the ID, it's not here, um, system, be ready, you did. All right. So the reason on the system, I'm not able to get the full permissions because on the system, it has only, you didn't add it this, so save it. This is the main mistake. We wasn't able to get the domain user. So again, if you go to the IT on the, from the access zone, check the permissions and go to the edit option. Get it? You can add everybody or you can just remove them. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> All right, so system sales, everybody should have the domain access. So domain is local sales. You can add this one if you want, save changes, it doesn't matter. But the, the main thing is on the system level, the, the one is IFS, <clears throat> some system maybe should have the full permissions. So now I'm going to go back to here and go to System, 1FS level, do you edit, edit SMB, and I'm going to provide system admin or maybe say for example, mine, 
my user, right? So root user has full control. I'm going to add myself there. See so now it has AD and says so is my name. And I can search as a domain user or right, site, right? I'm going to select myself and I'm a system admin. So that's why I provide my name as a root level access. Add it. So I have a root level access. Save it. All right. Close. So now if I go, okay, let's refresh it. IT. Security, creative, add. Now you see it's ELS. Now you can add, okay. So that dedicated folder on the IT folder, or so now we are not going to provide a key here. So inside the IT, there's a folder called video. So on the video folder, you provide the access sys admin permissions on the isolon side, but on, not on the file level, like on the directory level. So yeah, someone who has access needs to become on the file level or directory level and provide the access on the same user. So which is this admin user. Edit, add, say that's why yes, is ready and sys admin and check. Okay. So now sys admin is here and we'll give full permissions on this folder only, this directory only. Okay. So that means on the video folder, sysadmin has a full access. Now let's see as a full, how he can access. So uh, sysadmin is the IT department, right? So you can say slash, double slash IT dot, ELS dot com, uh, dot com video dollar, right? When will you click here? Now you're able to, it's gonna prompt you provide the username and password because previously you logged in, that's why it's not prompt you again. So now you are able to create as a sysadmin. You're able to create folder and also you will be able to delete the folder. So that's what actually was our target to show you uh, the, whole, the whole video. So now we can say we have complete solution for isolon configurations. So now you can create as much as you want. For example, for the marketing department, they want access. So create some user for them, right? Uh, some uh, directory for them. So create SMB share for them. Say, for example, marketing, they said, yeah, we need a folder name, uh, something, say MKT, MKT. So you can say dollar sign because we give them direct access on this folder. And under marketing, we are creating this one, right? So. In here, you can say slash MKT, no dollar sign here. You create the share and who can access it? So let's say select one of the group from here. I'm going to create a group from here. All right, so management, service account, user account, and groups, 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 groups. Okay, I have a group here, RDP group. Uh, market okay, marketing group. I have here. See if anybody is there. Member. So I have one member, and I can add myself here as a safe. I have my name here. Check. Okay, I add my mind on the marketing group. So this is the group name marketing, right? So this group we're gonna send here. So whoever is member of um, marketing group they will have access on this folder, MKT folder. But by default, there is everyone access and it's a read only. You can keep it or you can remove it. It's your choice, add, say full control to whom, select. Uh, it's a domain user, right? Now it's a group. So M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G marketing. And search, okay, select the domain, ELS, search. Okay, marketing is here, select. And it's a full control, add member, okay. So marketing group, whoever the users under the marketing group, 
all of them have, will have access on this directory, which is MKT, right? So create the share. So we created the share under marketing MKT. And now it's not done yet because as a sys admin, I have to sign, I have to sign. So as a sys admin, for example, if I go to, if I go to um, this one, uh, 150FS, okay. So where I'm the system admin, that's why I'm able to log in there. And marketing group, MKT. So MKT, I have to provide properties, security. And then edit and say add. M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G, marketing, check. All right, marketing, okay. And give, provide full access, apply, and okay. So the marketing group people, only they can have access on this directory. All right, so now for the marketing department, you can give them a URL, which is um, marketing, right? Marketing.ls.com, right? So they can type like this. They can type like this. Uh, I'm going to open another one. Open. Okay, double, double slash. M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G marketing dot E-L-S dot com slash M-K-T dollars. So directly they're gonna go there. All right, now it's permission required. So, um, under the marketing group, Saif, that means me, I have a permission, so I can say Saif. And All right, so I logged in there. This is my directory. Now I can create it as a marketing guy. I can create a folder. I can uh, create more folder. And I can delete the folder. It's up to, up to me. So that's all. So we learn actually how to add a user, uh, like add a share and provide the access to a user or a group. Uh, so this is the complete three node cluster setup. And um, thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like my video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And also don't forget to click the bell icon because I'm going to create a video like series video for Isilum. So if you want to get a notified for my next video, you need to click the bell icon. So you'll get automatically notified when I upload a video. Again, thanks for watching.